All right, and welcome on my next guest. We got Kyle Draper, host of Celtics pre and post game on NBC Sports Boston. Kyle, how's everything going? Good, Zach. How you holding up, man? Doing all right. Doing all right. I'm waiting for basketball to start back up. We got TBT in a couple days, but I don't think Fletcher McGee can really bring you the same joy as Jason Tatum. Exactly. You know, I, I, you know what though? I'll take anything at this point, okay. right? I just need to hear the balls bouncing, shots going up, three pointers, just some sort of competition. I'm ready for it. Yeah, no, I've been watching Korean baseball. I've been wait, I, I don't know where I can get. I'm trying to get a hoodie, but they don't sell them in the country. I'm trying to. I've been watching rugby. They get the the uh, what do you call it? What else is the the marble racing? I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I need hoops. I need hoops. I can't do with it. It's, it's, no, it's, I'm it's, with you, man. I'm with you. I can't yeah. wait. Yeah. So what were your so on the whole plan for Orlando? What were your initial thoughts when you kind of first found out about everything? You know, it's crazy because I've been on this roller coaster with this whole Orlando bubble situation. When it was first announced, I thought, yeah, let's do it. It's all good. Then you see the cases spiking in Florida, and now I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm less optimistic. You know, I, I don't want to say I'm pessimistic, but I'm like, man, if I was a player, I would be nervous to head down there to Florida. I think what you need to see happen, I think, in the NBA is hoping, hoping is that once you get inside that bubble, hopefully you'll be able to contain it. You know, we're hearing about positive tests now, but we still got, you know, three weeks to a month before games actually begin. And so I think the NBA's hope is that once guys get into that bubble and test negative, that they'll stay negative. But there will be a couple of cases, I'm sure, that yeah. pop up. And so, uh, you know, this is a marathon and not a sprint, really. You know, what happens July 30th, July 31st might not be the same as August 30th, August 31st. And so... I think we'll get to Orlando. The question is, can we finish in Orlando and finish out the season and crown a champion? Yeah, because you got a lot of – you got a, 22 teams coming down, even though four of them have a legitimate chance. Um, I just saw that Caleb Swanigan opted out, so I don't know how that throws off the entire playoff structure. <laughs> so <laughs> Perhaps, perhaps, man. They have to shut it down, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, what's the – I don't even know what teams on the Portland uh, – Wait, 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 Purdue? I don't even know where he's anymore. But yeah, now, yeah. Who's the Iowa guy, right? I think Purdue. 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 Yeah, Purdue. Six, he was incredible. Yeah, I think, he, was, he was amazing. No, but like, yeah, with, you see with all these cases and everything, and Florida is spiking. And the thing is, I'm not concerned about the players. A little bit more concerned about some of the older coaches. But I am concerned about the employees that are going to be coming in and out. That's the one thing that I'm like, why? If you're, if you're spe I saw they're spending like a million and a half dollars a day to book all this stuff, which is wild. Why would they just get like a, a fourth hotel for employees? Right, right. And, and, and they, they should, you know, and that's the one thing, you know, I, I, you got to think Adam Silver thought of that, right? Yeah. I, I don't understand, you know, but if I'm the NBA, those employees have to get tested daily. Yeah. But the problem we're seeing, we got guys testing positive one day and then the next day testing negative. Yeah. It's just, you know, I, I'm worried about the testing system yeah. too and, and how accurate are some of these tests, to be honest with you. And so I, I think the NBA, you know, is, is trying to take all the precautions necessary, but it's sort of a little blind hope, a, a leap of faith that they're taking that this will all work out too. Because basically half of the Nets have basically opted out of playing, are you concerned that the Wizards are now a title threat to, to the Celtics at all? <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, because Brad Beal is still on the fence. You know, he has not fully committed. And so I was thinking last week, if I'm Bradley Beal, and let's be honest, the Wizards don't have a chance at winning the championship. They can't win, right? Why would I risk going down there if I have zero chance at winning a championship? And so, especially a star player like him. And, you know, right now you're hearing, you know, some role players, some bench guys saying, I'm not playing. There's got to be a star player out there that says, you know what? It's not worth it. And I'm looking at Brad Beal and the Washington Wizards as that guy. He's still on the fence. I'm waiting to see what he actually decides. Yeah, because if, if, if a more key name comes down, they, I wonder if they would halt the whole thing. Because if, if Giannis says, I'm not playing, right, right. I wonder if they push it back. I don't, right. you, you don't know. Or, yeah. yeah, Kawhi yeah. or somebody like that. Yeah. Yeah. Ka Ka Kawhi would send an email and, hey, I'm not playing. Right. <laughs> exactly. I, I saw a a letter or something yeah. like that. You know? I, I saw something a couple weeks ago that says, when he retires, we're never going to hear from him again. Like, he's going to fall off the face of the earth. So it's, exactly. yeah. it, you know, I thought Tim Duncan would be like that. Yeah. Tim, he's back in the NBA. He's back. He's got the home. haircut too. He's got the, he's got the haircut. Yeah, he's got the hair. <laughs> Kawhi, that dude will disappear. And you know what though? Kawhi is a smart guy. He, yeah. he probably has some sort of major business opportunity or something that's so next level 
where he doesn't have to be out in the public eye and he's just going to be counting his millions. And he's going to be like working like at Ace Hardware and they're going to be like, hey, did you right. play basketball? It goes a little bit, a little bit. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, for, so for the teams that are in, do you think they expanded the, the pool because they want Zion in the playoffs? Because I feel like that's pretty obvious. No, not, not only that, but I, I do think, you know, the teams that are on the outside looking in just by a game or two, they have a gripe to say, yeah. you know yeah. what, at least give us a chance. Yeah. And you got to have a few games before the playoffs yeah. to get yeah. everybody ramped up. So this is sort of to throw a bone to those teams, those 9, 10, 11 teams, uh, you know, and, and 19 Mount East with the Wizards. And also a chance for the NBA and, and the contending teams really to get their uh, mojo going. But it doesn't hurt the NBA to have Zion. Cause, you know, it's a business, right? And Zion's one of your most prized assets. And so I don't blame the NBA if they gave that a thought, you know, to make sure Zion, you know, we'd still get some more. Yeah. Because let's remember, we were robbed of a half a season of yep. Zion. It's not like we had 60 games to watch him or something like that. We had 20-plus games, you know. And so uh, I, I don't blame the NBA if they took that into a, account. No, no, because I remember the, the day it all shut down, that last televised game, I think it was Pelicans, I don't remember who they were playing, but I'm like, all right, at least they're kind of ending off, there's going to be a hiatus, but you're going to see Zion on national TV, and then they're like, oh, yeah, one of the reps repped the Utah game, and they're like, yeah, we're not playing. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's wild. And then so who are some of your dark horses in this? Because I feel I, – I love Miami. I think people are sleeping on Miami. Right. So. Yeah, I think people are sleeping on Miami. And, you know, let's, let's start with the Eastern Conference. You know, depending on Victor Oladipo yeah. and if he plays and if he's 100%, I feel that there are six contending teams in the East. Really? You know, yeah, because think about it. We talk about Miami and Boston and Toronto. Throw those three in. The Sixers, they may be the team, you know, most thankful for this restart. You know, they got a chance to hit the reset button. And on paper, talent-wise, yeah. you know, they should be a championship contender team. So that's four. You throw in Indiana with a healthy Victor Oladipo. Yeah. Come on, man. Indiana, they got a great team, yeah. man. I think what they missed all season long was a superstar. Yeah. You throw in a Victor Oladipo, that takes them up a level. Yeah. And Miami, you know, just the way they play. They come at you every single night. They got tremendous role players. Jimmy Butler's a great leader. So I think there are six teams out east that could really make a, a, a legitimate case, at least for the Eastern Conference Finals, maybe even the NBA Finals. When you have a closer like Kelly Olenek, it's hard not to consider yourself like, like he, hey, give, I, seven, I still, give him the ball. The, hey, KO is my guy, man. <laughs> and I still remember a couple years ago, the Celtics had a 16-game winning streak, went down to Miami to take on Kelly Olenek and the Miami Heat, and Kelly Olenek went off against them and ended their 16-game winning streak. Don't badmouth KO on this show, man. I remember, I remember a couple years ago, I was like, all right, we got Sullinger, we got Olenek, like we got our front court of the future. I'm like, we are, we are set. And then Sullinger, every year they're like, oh, he's back in shape. I'm like, no, he just has a different haircut. I'm like, <laughs> but, but it, right, right. Because every year they're like, he's like, he lost. he's in a ton of shape. He's got the best shape of his life. I'm like, he looks the same. He's got like highlights, but that's, that's right. I yeah, yeah, that's how it was. Every training camp, you know, every <laughs> media day, you know, you hear about his new diet and, and everything. Marcus Smart was like that too a few years yeah. ago. He said he lost 20 something pounds and then, you know, he's been working on his shooting. He still wound up shooting there 31% or something like that from yeah. three, I think. So. And and then out west, besides the two L.A. teams, is there anybody that kind of is catching your attention? You got to look at Denver, right? I mean, if Jokic is healthy and, yeah. and, you know, he's slimmed down, hopefully that helps him. I mean, they're a deep team, man, you know. And, you know, I, I think, you know, when you talk about a balanced roster, the Clippers are a balanced roster. But I would throw Denver in that mix also. You know, they could go nine or ten deep. And, and I think this uh, restart, this Orlando bubble will actually favor – the teams that can go deep because I think the role players will play yeah. better. Superstars, they'll be great no matter yeah. what. But the role players who, you know, usually don't play well on the road, well, there's no road games, right? No. And so I think that the teams with the depth will play well. And then you look at a team like Utah also, you know. Uh, did they figure out this Mike Conley situation? Yeah. You know, is, is uh, you know, uh, Mitchell and, and Rudy Gobert, are they cool now? Yeah. Did they have a kumbaya moment, you know? And so, but I, I look at a team, I, I really like Denver out West, if you take away the other two L.A. teams. What do you think of Houston? They're the one that keep, I keep seeing them. Well, you know, you might be right about that, because think about it. Houston's, a, their system is a three-point shooting team, yeah. right? you got to imagine this is like a glorified pickup game, right? Yeah. You know, even though, you know, it's a high stakes NBA playoffs, you know, that kind of thing. 
but with no fans, it really is a glorified pickup game. And that may favor the teams that can shoot the three ball. And so, you know, for James Harden, think about it. You know, I know there's always pressure when you're a superstar, yeah. but, you know, this is what he does. He plays, you know, that's, this yeah. suits his game, I think, you know, this situation. Westbrook, all those guys. So Houston's a dark horse team. You know, I, I really do think, you know, now that you mentioned it, Houston may be the team nobody's talking yeah. about that, you know, like I said, it's a glorified pickup game. I think their style fits this kind of uh, situation. So watch them threes, man. I'm telling you. I, I think, you know, you know, remember Harden, what were they, like 0 for 27 at the start yeah. of the game? That is not going to happen this year in Orlando. I guarantee that. So Houston's a dark horse also. And then I feel like a team like the Thunder is somebody who could put somebody on upset watch early because nobody was really talking about them early on. People were like, oh, Chris Paul is probably going to get traded. And you're like, they're deep. They've got Gilgis Alexander. you got yeah. Gallinari. you got uh, Schroeder off the bench. you got Steven right. Adams. they you got a loaded right. roster. No, I, I really like them. I actually like them during the regular NBA yeah. season. You know, one of the last games that the Celtics played was against Oklahoma City. Yeah. And – they got a balanced team also. They got a lot of hard-playing guys, you know? And so you're right about that. And, you know, if you look at their numbers, their fourth-quarter numbers, you know, they got three or four guys in the top five in, you know, net rating in the fourth quarter. You know, when you throw in CP3 and Shea Gilgis, Alexander, and then those guys. And so Dennis Schroeder's up there as well. And so you're right. The Thunder are a good team. That's, you know. We know the L.A. teams. We know Milwaukee. Yeah. But it would not surprise me if one of these dark horse teams we're talking about winds up yeah. in the finals and winning it. I wonder if and and you've got to throw in health, too, right? That's I mean, true. What if, you know, a, a key player comes up with the virus, you know, that, that may derail somebody, you know? Heaven forbid if LeBron or A.D. or Kawhi or Paul George or somebody. And so, you know, there's a lot that's going to go into the, winning the championship this year. Plus, you've been seeing Chris Paul in all these commercials, and he looks fine. So maybe right. <laughs> uh, he's the only one you've been kind of seeing on a regular basis, him with the guy in the office. I don't know how they found him for that, but right. it's great. <laughs> and then were you surprised that even – so they kind of have this bubble that they didn't implement, that kind of just that no conferences, just kind of one through 16? Yeah, but, you know, we got some NBA purists out there. You know, think about it. One through 16, I, I think uh, I saw it – if you're the Celtics – your second round matchup would have been the Clippers or something like that. You know, I mean, it's like, you're the Celtics. Do you really want that? You know, it, it may be Milwaukee though, either yeah. way, but still, you know, and, and I think, you know, when you look at it, the Eastern conference probably wasn't for it. The West probably would have been for it. You know, you, if you're the eighth team in the West, you know, maybe, you know, you open up against, you know, the nine seed, you know, or something like that, you know? And so, you may have a better option. You know, if you're in Milwaukee, you could think that you have a cakewalk, you know, instead of maybe having to play, let's say, a Houston in the second round or something yeah. like that. You understand? So yeah. I, I think the Western Conference teams may have been all for it. The East, not so much. And then for the Celtics, who who scares you in the East that could give them kind of jitters early on? Philly, right? you you got to mention Philly. I mean, it's so funny because up here in Boston – we like to uh, crap on Philly, crap on the Sixers. They're laughing stock. Ben Simmons doesn't shoot a three. But I'm afraid of that matchup. If Embiid comes back in shape, if Simmons is healthy, which Brett Brown says he is, I mean, the Sixers, you know, they have a talented team. You could argue they have a, a more talented starting five than uh, Boston does. And so I just think that's a tough matchup because they got, they're a very good defensive team. They have long arms defenders, you know. Obviously, shooting is an issue for them. But when you look at Embiid and you look at Simmons, you know, two guys that are virtually unstoppable in what they do, you know, yeah. how can you stop Simmons from getting downhill and getting into the paint? And then you throw in a guy like Matisse Steibel. Yeah. I thought he gave Kemba Walker all sorts of fits during the regular season. And so I think the Sixers match up. You know, obviously the Toronto Raptors have always been a thorn in the Celtic side as well. And so those are two teams that scare me. Do you think the Raptors – I feel like last year they're, – they're the best team in, in the East. But I felt like Siakam was off and on at times. I feel like it, 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 from the first few rounds of playoffs, he was automatic. But once you got to the finals, he was kind of a different guy every night. Do you think he's ready to be that number one guy leading his team potentially to an Eastern Conference Final Four more? Well, I, I think – 
last year's experience will help him, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, to, to go, you know, into Oracle yeah. Arena, Golden State, you know, NBA Finals, and now be that guy. And let's not forget Kyle Lowry also. Yeah. He hit big shots uh, yeah. last year. And so, you know, there is sort of a, you know, even though they have the record, second best team in the Eastern Conference, I don't think anybody's really talking about them, you know, maybe because they don't have that superstar kind of player. But Siaka, man, you know, can he get most improved player again? <laughs> you know, I mean, this guy is legit. And so I, I think, you know, if I'm Toronto, I probably don't like the Milwaukee matchup, but I wouldn't be scared of anybody else if I'm Toronto. Yeah, no, it's interesting. And then, so what's your prediction? How do you see this, this uh, kind of going, fall, falling out? How do you see, how do you, what, what's your conclusion to the season? Wow, you're putting me on the spot. And, and I don't just want to go with Milwaukee Lakers yeah. NBA Finals, you know, the two no. number one seeds. No, I'm going to say Lakers in the West, and I'm going to say Boston in the East. And that's not me being a homer. I know I got the jerseys behind me and everything <laughs> like that. But I just think, you know, you know what? I'm going to change that. Philly in the East. How about Ooh, that? I right. think, like I mentioned, the reset button for the Sixers, you know, this is a chance for them to forget, you know, the first 60 games of the year. Forget Ben Simmons not taking a three. Forget about Al Horford not fitting in. If there's a team that's hungry in the East, or should be hungry in the East, it's the Sixers. And so I'll throw Philly and, uh, you know, the Lakers in the final. Is that Smart or Shaq on the left right there? This to is uh, Marcus Smart, big fella. Where is that? I, no, I used to thought I used to have the Shaq thirty six because I remember that one year. Oh, was, dude, that, that's a collector's item, though, yeah. right? When he yeah. played thirty games or something like remember. that in Boston. So. It, that was a fun team. Him, Jermaine O'Neal. That was a yeah, wild yeah. Mate. That was wild. That's wild. That's interesting. And then for for flipping over to, to um, like baseball, football, do you see them with the? They're not doing the bubble. Do you, do you see? How do you see that working out? I I, I don't like that. You know, I, I just think you know. You're trusting these guys to not go out, not, not be in the public. And, and I don't know if you can do that. I mean, no. we're seeing all around. You know, the average person is out there doing their regular, normal thing. And so if you're talking about, let's say, football, for instance, a lot of close contact in that sport, uh, you know, I wish they would go to the bubble situation. I think all these leagues will get started. The question is, can they sustain it? I'm, yeah. Even the NBA, you know. Yeah. They'll get to the start of the season, the, the restart. But, you know, as the numbers start to increase, as more guys become infected, can they continue? And so that, that's the biggest thing. Football still has some time. Obviously, they've already cut down a number of preseason games. I'm really worried about that because that is, you know, a, an up close. You know, there's all kind of fluids and sweat. It's just, I don't know, man. Yeah. You know, I think each league has to do a great job of testing. And I'm talking about every day yeah. and a great job of isolating. Yeah, no, with football, I saw the possibly the take of the year yesterday. It was like something I'm like, where is this guy from? Some guy tweeted, wait a minute, if they're cutting the preseason downs from four to two, how are they going to rush storylines on hard knocks? And I'm like, are you <laughs> kidding me? Yeah, that's important, right? That's <laughs> how they're going to do it in the first place, because they're not going to have camera crews all over. I don't know. How hard knocks, I didn't expect it. I don't know. But yeah, but football, I, I personally think like the schedule, I don't think the schedule is going to happen. I think they're going to be able to maybe just kind of do two hubs, NFC, yeah. AFC, and just do inner squad. Because if right. they're saying like, oh, we're going to have guys flying there the day that the day of and flying home that same day. I'm like, are you, no, you're not. No, you're yeah. Not it doesn't make sense. No. And, 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 and no offense to air travel, but, you know, you're talking about a conv confined space. Yeah. If there's one guy that may have it and we don't know, yeah. you know, can that spread easily and quickly? You know, I don't know, man. It's, uh, you know, maybe they should uh, rip up the schedule and maybe do, do it regionally, you know? Like, yeah. you know, the Patriots only play, you know, the Jets, you know, the East Coast teams. You know, the farthest you go is maybe down to Washington or Baltimore or something like that. I don't know. But you're right, man. You know, for them to have this regular schedule, I think it's going to happen. You know, it's a long season, obviously. Anything can go wrong during it. Maybe they just let the Skins play Jacksonville 16 times, and we'll see how. That, that Over in out. London, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that worked too. <laughs> they, they get the Ferris wheel, they got a lot of stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, speaking of uh, football, what's the reception like with Cam Newton's out of the past? Oh, people love it up here, man. But you know how homers are, right? You know, last week people were trashing Cam Newton. You know, nah, it's Jared <laughs> Stidham. He's the guy we want. This week, you know, everybody wants to get their Cam Newton jersey. Everybody thinks Bill Belichick is a genius. 
Uh, personally, I actually like the move because I like him as a player. I still think he has something left in the tank. I just don't think the Patriots are the perfect fit for him because they don't have many weapons. You know, they're going to be asking Cam to do a whole lot. And I don't want to say they are setting him up to fail, but, you know, we, we, we are going to be discussing this on NBC Sports Boston later. Which quarterback will have a better revenge season, Tom Brady or Cam Newton? And I say Tom Brady because yeah. – all Brady has to do is get it to his weapons and get the hell out the way. You know, it's not like Brady has to go out there and throw 50 times and throw for 500 yards and beat a man five, six touchdowns. He has so many weapons that can help him. Whereas Cam Newton up here in new England, not as many of yeah. Brady's got two of the top 10 receivers in football. One of the most untapped uh, uh, tight ends in football and OJ Howard, you got Gronk coming back. He gives you anything. I think that's a positive. Right. And then Cam, I, I Mohamed don't Sanu. Yeah, that's one big name. They traded a second round pick for Sanu. So, I, no, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> big season <laughs> right. coming. Big season coming for Sanu. You get Sanu, Jacoby Myers, Nikhil Harry. Right. That's uh, what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, Tony Michelle. You rely on the running backs a lot. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, if I am any business in Newton, Massachusetts, I am calling the Patriots tomorrow. Like, hey, we want him out here. Newton, Massachusetts. Picture him. Picture exactly. the backup. Chinese restaurants, grocery stores, anything. Yeah. Newton. Make a mayor for the day or something, yes. right? You know, name a key. day after him. Seriously. Give, give the key to the city. Yep. Good to go. <laughs> but yeah, but this has been awesome. Thanks so much for chatting for giving us. And for people that don't already follow you, how can they find you on social media? Hit me up on all my social media accounts. They're all the same. Kyle Draper TV. That's uh, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. Make sure you give me a follow, man. And uh, some good stuff coming. Hopefully this NBA restart, you know, we'll be right back at it here at NBC Sports Boston. Man, I'm hoping the Sixers don't make the finals, like you said. But I, I, that's, <laughs> six, it's going to be wild. But yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much again.